<laughs> but it's quite common to open bottles, so I guess this is... <laughs> and I have to pour it. I guess so Serra Denari, maybe the, the starting point to understand it is really its name on its own. So Serra Denari literally in Italian means uh, keep the money. And uh, it comes because, because when there was the, the Middle Age, all uh, the people living in the lower, um, living around were looking for uh, their safety. And so they went up to the highest point looking for the fresher and healthier air. And they made all this work by keeping uh, their money under their arms. And so they found safety over there and they baptized that place as Serra Denari, so keep the money. And I think everything lies on that because it's actually the highest vineyard all over the Barolo area, uh, which is one of the most important factors and variants that impact our wines. And uh, so um, everything lies on that. So Serra Denari is a property, uh, is a crew, but is the historical name of our winery because this is the heart of that uh, appellation. And um, it's uh, our winery since uh, 1870, but it has always been the countryside house, so never been a um, winery, in fact. And, um, and it's funny because every generation changed a lot of stuff over there. So uh, there used to be some vineyard before and my grandfather took them away in order to try to have some white truffle in an artificial way because it's still um, among the last properties who owns both vineyard and forest. So it was used to have some white truffle over there. And so this is why my grandfather tried to, uh, uh, to replicate it um, artificially. Uh, so this is why it's, uh, in the same time it's old and young because it's old the property, but it's extremely young the winemaking. Uh, part. So um, in 2001 my father replanted everything. At the beginning with the idea to resell and then he started the winery but not really in the, he was never in the winemaking process. So um, actually really the, the true origin, the very starting point of the winemaking has been when I arrived in the winery in 2013 and so when how I slowly started to, to, to make the wines. None in the family has never been passionate of wine, so I didn't grow up with a culture of wine or like, uh, uh, or banally the, the thing is that wine was a product as every other product, so it's like uh, everything that can be produced, so this is why I was not really inter interested in it. On it. And actually it was a visit in Burgundy that completely blew, blew me away. But um, then you don't know if unconsciously, you know, having a winery, of course, make you more susceptible to something or just to, to of course, to that. But then it was a, a bottle in a winery that let me understood how wine can put together so many things and it's just not a product and it's just not something that you make for your own or to produce something, but it's something that is definitely bigger and includes a lot of different uh, uh, points on which I'm extremely sensible to. And so when I had this, um, it was like almost, I don't know how to say, but an illumination <laughs> in some way. And so on, since then I came back from Milan, I fired myself from my old job that I was in love with. So it was really not another changing, like um, I was not satisfied and then I moved, it was just to, I was lucky enough to change from one job that I was extremely in love with to make something that it was even more. So since then I've started, uh, I loved wine because I know it's, I think among the few things that really you can say that you will never know how to do it. So being quite ambitious, <laughs> I like to be all the time in, uh, with that kind of challenge and for, what, for which it, it's something that is bigger than you and you cannot, you will never be able to pretend that you know how to do it or to control it or um, it's impossible because it depends on too much variances that are not depending on you. 
Stella Denario is really in the peak of La Marra and it's uh, uh, not watching to the vineyard but watching to the Alps, which is extremely important both geologically for what went on over there but also for uh, a terroir point of view, so all the microclimates and all the, uh, all the different um, yeah, terroir that I can find over there. So um, I think two are the most important variants over there, the altitude and the forest. Um, which means that really you have very different parcels. So over there what happened is to be that the, the highest point uh, all over the appellation is because it was when the Alps were created and so over there it was all a big ocean. Um, it was a huge uh, point of impact of a lot of violence which uh, um, means that you had really different geological formation that crossed over there for which uh, you have some very typical Tortonian soil from the La Mora area but some very untypical from the area because when the plagues goes one and to go one and to the other you have two forces one that push and one that pull and so it was like merging so this is also why I do not have really parcels that are completely limited but they are mainly uh, all with different vein of different soils so we have to simplify it uh, we have three basically three different soil from where then I've started to make the three different Barolo that we produce um, so we have a more uh, very Tortonian soil from La Morra, so with this uh, mainly clay, some marl that are very, very little amount of marl that are extremely not compacted, so they're yeah, not compacted, and um, from which we make one kind of barolo, so it's the barolo la tartufaia, um, and then we have uh, two other completely different soils, so we have the Serradenari one, from where I decided to make uh, it's not the most representative of the crew, but yes, it's the first one from where I hypothesized the, the terroir effect at mine. So it's a very sandy soil, uh, less deeper soil, and uh, um, it's uh, mainly uh, acid, which is something that is very untypical from the area. And it's also, it's untypical to have the marriage between acidity and sandy soil with so not compacted marl again. And, um, and this a little bit calmed down both the aspect from one side and the other. So you have the higher acidity that should bring more vigor that is completely calmed down by um, the sands and the altitude. But also the, this acidity brings also, I think, I suppose a little bit also the tighter side that we have uh, in the Serra Denari that in general not brought from this kind of component. And, um, and then the Marassio, which is in the limestone, is the highest part ever. So we really have three different, uh, completely different soils. Uh, we produce, uh, basically, we have uh, basically Nebbiolo, which is quite used in the area. <laughs> and uh, so we have uh, uh, Lange Nebbiolo and three different Barolos that come from the three different soils and three different parcels and then we also have due to the um, particularity of this altitude and on the north exposed slope uh, we have some two uh, little vineyards of Chardonnay and Pinot Nero which are not really typical from the area but uh, we have also that one yeah no, we have Barolo La Tartufaia that it's for me uh, it's really is the more um, um, approachable one uh, in a good sense. So uh, it's really the one that is more fruit driven. So it's really more uh, hugging you uh, since the beginning, since its youth. And it has these tannins that are more really welcoming uh, in the mouth. They're very large, they're very uh, expressive often since really the truly beginning of its life, also during the aging. And um, then we have the Barolo Serra Denari that is definitely more the um, vegetal part of the, of the Nebbiolo, but by vegetal I do not mean like anything that it's green, but it's more everything that is in the... Um, Mm, uh, old branches of trees, uh, uh, under forest, uh, mushroomery, uh, more the humidity is really more, for me, it reminds me October at hours, so it's more uh, obscure in, one, in some way, it's a little bit more deeper also at the, at the nose, and, um, and the, the tannins become 
they are more fine, but they are tighter uh, and flatter, and they're really like I'm Serra Denari, you know, and Vuelta to Faya is more really enjoying life and going around with two big moustache. You have Serra Denari that is more like, okay, here I am, a little bit more uh, elegant, etc. And then you have Marassio that is for me, it's really a bridge in between because you have some um, uh, red fruit notes that are in the, in the Tartufaya, that are a little bit like the... They are there that says, yeah, I'm here, but then it's very uh, extremely mineral and super straight already in the nose. And it has really this, it's more, um, I don't know how we say it, uh, like, like leek stones kind of taste. And it's extremely um, more on the centre. Uh, and then it's more, yeah, it's definitely more in, the, in that sense. And then in the mouth, it's completely different because it has these tannins that are all... I like, I used to call them like suspended wine, the wines that are all in the highest part of the palate, but extremely straight and long and salty. And, um, and it has different layers of tannins that are all going on and you do not even expect that. So it's the more stateerial one, it's more aristocratic, it's a wine that if you want to understand it, okay, but otherwise it's not spending time to be understood and which is more he knows exactly where he goes so it's uh, three completely different characters and yeah Lange Chardonnay the best pairing uh, for me my favorite one could be um, with um, maybe with a tuna tartare a little bit uh, fatter fish, but it's also delicate and, and a little bit could fit extremely nice with that. Um, I like Pinot, it's extremely banal, but with the, um, uh, with the Fassona, uh, with, the, with the Fassona Tartare, which is raw meat and uh, mainly known for Piedmont. Uh, but I like it because we have a little bit of tannins that are uh, fitting extremely well with the um, uh, not fat part of that meat. Uh, so it's one of my favorites. And uh, I like Lange Nebbiolo in general with a fat risotto. So yeah, I repeat myself, but it's like with the risotto Fontina and Arancia and uh, orange is extremely well because you have the fat part of the cheese and then the acidity of the orange and uh, with a um, wine that is extremely crunchy and fresh and direct, can fit extremely well. Uh, and then with the Barolo for all of them. Okay, so for all of them, I would like to pair like Barolo La Tartufaia. Allora, Barolo La Tartufaia would fit extremely well, but this is a recipe from Sicily. But we have like, uh, it's the involtini alla palermitana, they are called, and they are like this uh, um, roll meat, red meat, with inside some pan grattato. Uh, I don't know how we said it. Bread, bread uh, yes. You have the uva passa. The Great, uh, raisins. Raisins, the dry raisins, and uh, pinoli. Uh, this is hard for me. Pine nuts and the mint inside of it, but then is everything bread and with uh, a lot of an onion together and you cook them and it's extremely good with something that is a little bit because you have the dried resins that would fit extremely well with the fruity part of the, the tartufaia. Uh, Serra Denari is extremely banal but with the parmigiana is just amazing because you, you, you dry all the mm, more rich part of la parmigiana and then for the marassio I have allora, two different actually mm, I just came in my mind uh, one of the best recipes I ever had was calamari on the um, barbecue but with inside some fried artichokes and uh, a little bit of mint and, uh, and it, again for Sicily um, mint and uh, provola 
and it was just amazing and Maras could fit extremely well because we have a little bit the fravola that is fat but then um, the artichoke that is fried so it's not tannic at all and the, the, the calamaro that is amazing and I love also with pasta with fish so everything that has like also with some branzino you know, with some um, uh, yeah I like to pair it also with pasta then of course uh, with a uh, fish uh, with pasta with fish but then of course uh, uh, also with meat it fits extremely well, but then it's more common. I think that it's among f maybe for the few parts of the world on which climate change is more, in some way, a little bit more positive uh, than negative because Nebbiolo used to, um, is a very long vegetative cycle variety, so it has always been the first two buds and the last one to be picked, so in general we always pick the end of October and is extremely late ripening variety. So um, with the climate change, everything is a little bit, it's getting a little bit easier to get to that kind of ripeness that we, that we look mainly on the phenolic, under the phenolic point of view. So um, I think that under the varietal point of view, also looking to the last 40, vint 40 vintages, you see really the difference that have went on all over the Nebbiolo. Then, of course, uh, it's starting to, it is something, it's extremely, it is warm at ours. So um, we need to, of course, viticulture has to adapt himself to the different climate that we will have. So we need to be extremely flexible. Uh, our job is about flexible, flexibility 100%. So there are no receipts any year. So you really have to be completely to understand what the weather is what is going on, so maybe one year you have to reduce completely your yields because otherwise you will not have ripeness. Another year you have to definitely keep all the grapes because otherwise you have too, con too much concentration. So every, uh, all of that, will is we are learning, so we need experience and we are facing more and more vintages like this. So all of us also in the area are now starting to understand how to deal with it in all the management, management of the soil, management of the canopy. Uh, it's nice to see how back in times it was, we needed to go down to have the grapes nearer to the soil in order to have them warmer. While now, in fact, it's the opposite. You need to have them the happier they are and the fresher, fresher they are. So uh, we are facing all this issue again, but I think that compared to other region is the one that is uh, less impacted in a negative way. Uh, compared to the evolution of the variety, then on the viticultural point of view, we really need to be extremely attention to what we are doing. So it's a little bit, there are the two phases of the medals. I think the, the advantage of being so high is uh, not only, is, it's not that it's fresher, is that it's more meat, mild, mild. mild. So it's more mild and which means that um, the progression in ripening is lower, which allows really to wait exactly the right moment on which you want to pick and without risking to have uh, from one day to another a drop of acidity or too much concentration in alcohol, which is happening in order, of course, in a warmer site it is because it's definitely more risky. So this is a positive, uh, uh, today is a positive thing which back in times was absolutely not at mine and uh, and also it's more mild also and so this is winter means that being high it's less cool so even for frost is definitely um, a good point because we do not have the inver thermic inversion so we are not eat too much but when we have minus six on the plane it's two at our and often you see all the over downstairs and it's full of cloud and here we are like in the in the sun and the motor is completely you do not see absolutely nothing and uh, and in summer while well, you have maybe 40 degrees at hours is 34 which is still warm but it's more mild so it's more yeah, balanced I would say maybe vrai. and make Chena. Because okay. Chena, wow, and it's great. It's really, really great and it's tough to do. And uh, I love them. 
and is extremely honestly if I didn't it's the only variety that I really thought I would love to have it at mine just to handle it in some way which I don't have a clue on how it could be done so yeah I would say like this okay we're gonna start a little bit easier mm -hmm. see <laughs> you were not expecting it Agnolotti. Whew, it's tough. Both, it's impossible to say. I can't say both. Both, absolutely both. Both vineyard and cellar. We could say both also here, but botti. Dolcetto. Chambol. San Francisco. <laughs> New York. Oh. I know if I have to, but I saw only LA and Sacramento until now. So I'm sorry, but it's not even. 